Charts in monday.com allow you to see your data with ease in a visual way. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over the basics of chart setup in monday.com. So as you can see here, I am in an example monday.com system. I've got a couple of boards here, board number one and board number two. Now I would like to go ahead and create a graph. So in order to do so, we wanna go ahead and create a dashboard. To do this, press the plus button at the top left-hand corner here, and then we wanna go ahead and create a new dashboard. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna call this example dashboard, and I'm just gonna leave it as main, but if you would like this dashboard to be private to you only, that's absolutely fine, just select that option. Once you're happy, go ahead and press create dashboard, and we need to select the boards that are associated with this particular dashboard. So what does that actually mean? We need to select the boards that we want the data to feed into our dashboard from. So in the case of this video, it's going to be board number one and board number two, but you may have maybe five or six boards that you'd like to collect all of that data from and put it into a chart. So make sure you select all of those boards. Once you're happy, just press the done option and we need to go ahead and create a new chart. So to do so, go to the add widget button in the top left hand corner here and select the chart option at the top. If for whatever reason this has changed, go to more widgets and just search chart in the top left hand corner and go ahead and select the chart option. Once you've added a chart widget, we've got a couple of options here. We can go ahead and press the three dotted button and we can dock this widget so it takes up the entire screen. You do not have to do this however and you can have multiple charts per dashboard. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna leave it as is and now we just wanna go through some of the settings options. So we've got the settings option here and then this is gonna give us loads and loads of stuff we can cover. So firstly, we've got our chart type. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the pie chart. We've got a bar graph. We've also got a line chart and then we've got a stacked bar and we've got bubbles as well. So lots of different options. I'm going to try and go through as much as I possibly can. So a pie chart looks just like this, very self-explanatory. A bar graph like this and a line graph just like this. OK, we then have a stacked bar graph. Now a stacked bar graph you can see here is stacked by something. So it's a bar graph based on status stacked by something else. So it allows us to condense more information into one graph. A good example of this is if you are tracking lead volume, you might have on the left hand side the date, so date created, and it might be January, February, March, and then you might wanna see the number of leads per month. So in this instance, just as an example, in January, it's two leads, February, it's three leads, March is five leads, but it's stacked by source. So I can see here that one source provided one lead, the other source provided one lead. In this instance, on February, there were two leads from this source, one lead from this source, and so on and so forth. I hope you get the idea. And then we got bubbles. I'm not going to go into bubbles in this video. I don't think <laughs> I don't think they're that exciting. Um, we've got a few different pie chart options, and then we've got the different line graph options as well. We've got line fixed. We've got line smooth. We've then got a stacked line graph, which is more or less the same principle as a stacked bar graph. And then we've got a 100% stacked line graph, which is just you can see here always goes to 100. We've got a few different bar options, stacked, and then 100% stacked. And then we've got column, stacked column, and then 100% stacked column. And then we've got area, we've got stacked area, and then 100% area. I hope you get the idea around these. And lots of different options for you to test. But once you're happy with your chart type, we need to head over to the X axes. So I'm, in this instance, just going to select the bar option, go to my X axes. And my X axes is obviously the bottom axes. We need to go ahead and select what dictates our x axis so we can do this all at once so if you've got multiple boards associated with your dashboard then you can go ahead and select all at once or just go one by one so you can see here we've got one by one and we want to go ahead and select let's say the status from each board on a one by one basis the reason you may do this is because on board number one, for example, you may have five different status columns, but one the but there's only one status column that you actually want to use. So in, in case Monday.com gets confused by which status column we want to use, you can manually go ahead and select that as an option. So once you're happy with your X axis, we then need to define our Y axis. So you go to our Y axis here. And we've got a few different options, again, all at once or one by one. So then we've got the column that defines it. So here we have two options. We've got count items, which is the total number of items per status. So two, three, four, or we've got rating. So we can see we've got rating options. Now this is gonna vary significantly dependent on the column options you have available on your different boards, okay? So you, the X axis, it might be value. So if I go ahead and show this as an example, I'll go to board number one, add a numbers column, and go to numbers and then put let's say 5000 in this 2000 in this 1000 in this and then i'll go to board number two and do exactly the same so i want to go numbers again 
there we go let's say let's two three thousand five hundred um twenty one hundred and then let's say four thousand and then i'll go back to my example dashboard go to the settings again go to my y-axis you can see here count items we now have the number functionality as well and that automatically works it out if we need to do it on a board by board basis we've got numbers and then numbers again now what we can do is do a calculation function so we can do a sum of or we can do the average or we can do median min or max in this instance let's say do the average so per status this is the average amount uh, this is the average amount each item uh, equates to or we can do sum of so all of the items in the working on it status equal 9500 all of the items in the loss status equal 3100 so hopefully you get the idea there once you're happy with the y-axis we can move on to benchmark lines so benchmark lines allow us to put a benchmark so let's say we add a number value of 5000 and then we define a benchmark as the minimum and then we can add another benchmark we could say 7000 or 8000 as the goal let's say and then you can change the color of your benchmark line and as you can see here they appear on the board very nicely so this would be really helpful for tracking progress um, especially if you're doing anything with leads or deals or anything like that and you can see here the names are written on the left hand side and the colors are coordinated uh, as we set them to which is pretty cool benchmark lines can be very helpful so moving on from benchmark lines we then have more settings so we can sort by and we can sort by y-axis ascending descending or x-axis ascending and descending you can make changes to your graph accordingly um, we can show to only top slash bottom items if we want to and then we can also show cumulative data so cumulative totals as opposed to just the actual amounts and then also show or hide empty values now you notice here that this is defined as an empty value despite the fact that it has written information in this is the default value for a status option so do take that into consideration so you can show empty values if you want you can see here the done status option has a value of zero or equals to zero despite that is being shown on the graph because we've selected show empty values once you're happy with that we can go over to the boards area and we can hide and show selected boards so if you've got multiple boards feeding into this particular uh, dashboard but we only need a couple of those boards to be applicable for this widget we can unselect those boards that apply to this widget if we need to so we can select or unselect and then finally we can define groups so if there are groups that you would like to exclude from the dashboard you can go ahead and remove that so let's say group two for both board one and board two are not particularly not applicable or let's say group one from board number two is not applicable group two is you can see how that makes changes and excludes groups so if i go to board number one you can see we've got group one and group two if i unselect group two then it removes it from the actual graph itself so once you've got your group set up you are good to go with your chart you can go ahead and hide the settings option and select the view option and this is how you can view your data now i appreciate this is not particularly nuanced um, and may leave a lot of open questions but this is just the basics of chart functionality inside of monday.com if you need additional help setting up monday.com whether that be charts or anything else we'd be delighted to help check out the link below uh, book a call and we'll speak to you soon otherwise thank you ever so much for watching i'll hopefully see you in the next video thank you and goodbye